I'm still on my way westward to Yellowstone. I've crossed the Bighorn Mountains and I'm now in the Bighorn Basin. It's flat, arid, and dusty. It rains about six to 10 inches per year around here. Crossing regions like this really drives home how big the United States is. I'm riding through flyover country for sure. One upside though is that normally in the Great Plains, I'll go over a hill and find more flatland on the other side. Here I'll go over a hill and I'll find the surrounding mountains getting closer. They're always a wonder for me to stare at, and they keep me focused on my goal, too. This land is also where wild horses roam, many from the Spanish. Apparently in 1680, Pueblo natives in today's New Mexico were ruled by the Spanish Empire inside the Viceroyalty of New Spain. A Pueblo hero by the name of Pope led a revolt against the Spanish, forcing them from New Mexico. In the process, he released Spanish horses that became the first wild herds in North America in 8,000 years. Today, they're monitored by the Bureau of Land Management thanks to the 1971 Wild Free Roaming Horses and Burrows Act. This region is also home to the Hole in the Wall Gang. This gang was a group of outlaws that operated out of the Hole in the Wall Pass. They were known for cattle wrangling, stagecoach and train robbing, killing for hire, revenge murders, and black market trading. The gang wasn't really organized, but rather a loosely associated syndicate of desperados. The Hole in the Wall hideout, where the gang would operate, was geographically advantageous. It was impossible for lawmen to enter the area without detection. Many westerns were based off the outlaws who operated in this area. You may have heard of them. Kid Curry, Butch Cassidy, Sundance Kid, News Carver, Black Jack Ketchum. Even Jesse James was said to make a visit to the Hole in the Wall hideout. Their actual stories are much less romanticized than early 20th century westerns would make you believe. Being arrested for horse stealing. Doc, you know I didn't steal that horse any more than you did. Although a menace to society, their names are well known and will forever be associated with the Wild West. I wish I had the time to go through their stories, but if I did, I honestly don't think I'd make it to a Yellowstone episode for months. Also here is the Bridger Trail. After Red Cloud's War closed the Bozeman Trail, there were still many emigrants trying to get into the booming goldfield communities of Montana. A man by the name of Jim Bridger found a route through the Bighorn Basin. To be honest, it must have been horrible. I imagine dry and dusty fields of rocks for miles and miles. Very little water or food. Heat. Four years before Bridger made his first crossing, a lieutenant by the name of Henry Maylandier attempted to map this area. He said, This region is totally unfit for either rail or wagon road and can only be traversed with the greatest of difficulty. People were tough back then. Every time I whine about something such as not having cell service, needing to find a gas station, or the travel taking too long, I remember this. Any setbacks that I have out here are childish 21st century problems. People died out here. After passing through various small communities, mostly along small creek beds, I made my way into the city of Cody. It's named after Buffalo Bill Cody, the man who first romanticized the Wild West with his touring band of actors, cowboys, natives, sharpshooters, and western celebrities. The original log cabin from Hole in the Wall was moved here from its original location and put on display in the Buffalo Bill Center of the West. Cody is the closest major city this side of Yellowstone. It's where you'll find all the necessary restaurants, hotels, mechanics, department stores, and retail outlets you can't find in the national park just beyond. I just hope I have everything. I got good news and bad news. Bad news is I took the wrong turn, but good news is, is I'm still going into Yellowstone. I can't get a clear thing out of my phone. It doesn't have any service here. Pulled over to drink water and make sure that I'm like on the right track. It's like 7 p.m., 7.30. No, 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 6.50. I'm exhausted. This is day two of nothing but riding. It's constant, constant riding. So it's time to get some water. Um, I'm at the uh, Shoshone National Forest, and I keep seeing all these campgrounds nearby, and I can't help wondering if I can't get in here, am I going to have to turn around and come to one of these? I wouldn't want that. Right now, I'm on it. I'm really enjoying myself. It's just uh, the uncertainty kind of is like, ah, what now? The sun's still up, so I still got time. I'm still on my way there, but I don't know what kind of availability will be there when I get there. I know I can get in but I just don't know if I can stay it. If I'm in between like two big ass freaking RVs and glampers, fine. As long as all my stuff is in one place right next to my bike at a campground, I will be as happy as a clam. I'll make some food, get a good night's sleep. I will be on the way and continuing to Ye uh, Yellowstone. Uh, 
and I'm sick of the helmet. There's nothing but helmet all day. Helmet beard, helmet hair, helmet face, windburn. It's a, it's a challenge, it totally is. All right, I'm gonna stop talking. It's time to go.